All right. Now let's pick up from where were we last week. Okay. So last week we learned how you can connect your uh, Xbox controller to your Unity. And we have some issue with that computer. But today I think this will work, I believe. I hear the sound. Then we have this notification. Joystick connected. So it actually automatically detects what have you connect to the Unity. Uh, it supports, I think it supports some of the mainstream controllers you're going to use or you may want to use with your game. So definitely Xbox One controller is one of them and let's <coughs> let's look at code to see how can we do this alright so first if you remember we did some uh, configuration to the inputs here so it's gonna be through here the edit menu and then you go to project settings input and then you will have this kind of input manager there. Can you see this clearly? Or some somewhat it's clear, right? Okay. So here, the inspector is here. So that's actually the input manager inside Unity, embedded in Unity. That part you don't have. You don't have to uh, like writing a script, writing your your own program to map the input from the controller to your uh, to your script. Here, it does Unity does that job for you already here. So what if you want map something? If you want call some something uh, a name you want here I call it Xbox one access 4 yeah I don't think you can see that very clear <laughs> but I can tell you this is Xbox one access 4 so if you remember what is Xbox one access 4 If you look at the notes there, so we have different axes on and controller, right? Each button is actually an axis. Like this A button is axis zero, zero, and B is axis one, two is axis two, three is axis three, uh, the the Y is axis three. Okay, so each button, each including those joystick. For one joystick, for one thumbstick, it actually has three axes. One one axis control the left and the right. Another axis represents the up and down. Another axis <coughs> is you press. Right? Remember, you can press the the thumbstick on the Xbox controller right here. You can you can you can press. So that's another axis. So three axes. So we have a whole bunch of axes here. And then, but but in your script, you may you don't want to call uh, like access one, access two, access three. So you want to give some name, give some meaning to those axes. So that's why we're using this uh, uh, Xbox controller here. We can give a name, and maybe this Xbox One access four. Maybe you can name it somewhere something else, like move, move up and down, something like that and then you map it to the joystick okay joystick and then you select which axis are you going to use okay and you can also set up some uh, sen like sensitivity 
like how sensitive you want your button to be and this can actually when you press the button what happened what actually happened there is it sent out elect electrical signal electric signal to the system and uh, I don't know exactly how Xbox One does that but sometimes it's related to the uh, voltage sometimes it's related to something else but but it's it's send, sending out a signal but sometimes it's strong si stronger signal sometimes it's a weak signal so if you can distinguish from the value of that signal then you can use that value to control like how much have we done on this axis like we move halfway towards the left sometimes like that that but sometimes if you don't don't want the system to to sense that input when it's pretty small or sometimes you you touch it by accident you can control that through a lot of properties here like sensitivity and this uh, and the whole, whole bunch of them include um, gravity that and I'm not going to explain all of them but each one of them has a different meaning so you can refer to you can always refer to the documentation for uh, if you if you want to manipulate each of the variables okay here just uh, I just show you the basic way of mapping those okay so this is the Xbox one controller and we set up it set it up in the input manager and what we did here in this in this okay if you remember we are playing with the cube one okay so this is uh, how we control it in the script. Okay. So first, uh, if you're using this uh, Visual Studio, it's not that clear, right? Let's see if I can adjust. Okay. So. Um, we have uh, in each of the script in this script we attach we attach to this blue cube we attach a script that is called control config and it's enabled if you check here it's gonna enable this script on this object and this script is gonna control the behavior of that object it attached to for now okay so how how will the script control the behavior so from here you can see the script is inherited from this mono behavior so so that actually is a class that called by the unity system to control the behavior and what has included in this in this class is first the start function start function is called once you like initialize this object and then uh, there's another important function called update so update is called every frame in the game to give update to update the behaviors of your game objects okay so okay we have update here and then inside the update <coughs> you can see we are trying to detect if if the Xbox one controller has been connected so we have uh, this here so we have controller equals X a uh, controller uh, Xbox one for Windows that is actually the name for the Xbox one controller if you come back here look at this look at this notification here the name of this thing in unity by default it's called controller xbox one for windows okay so we compare this controller to this string and controller is another string and how do we set up the controller is 
yeah we have another function here identify controller so we give the input dot get joystick names and we put the first joystick connected the name of the first joystick connected to the system we give the name to this string controller is actually a string remember controller is a string so here we are able to compare the controller with the name here so if we detect that the controller has been connected okay yeah maybe that's a good idea right yeah that sounds looks better better <coughs> Okay, so we have somewhere, let's say, let's say that for now. We have somewhere, we already set up this variable, controller, it's a string. And we set up the, the actual, uh, the actual <coughs> controller's name to there and we compare it to this. And once we detect that it is controlled, it, the controller is detected, it is connected, then we are able to use some of the statement like if else or if you if you like you want can you switch or whatever those logic there to control the input so for example here this is example okay so if input dot get axis xbox one axis x so where is where do we come with this name Xbox One Axis X. That's what we set up here in this in this in this Xbox One Xbox One Axis X. That's how we name this axis. You can uh, name this axis anything else you want, like CGDD. If you name the CGDD, then you want to change this to CGDD. Okay. Let's change it back. There's a lot of places I use that name. Okay. All right. So <coughs> if we get the axis uh, less than zero, that means like we, we move it towards left. We move the thumbstick to the left. We move this thing to the left. How would you uh, change the name of the controller? Name of the controller? Uh, oh, you mean me here? This one? This name? Uh, I'm not sure if you can change that, but I think that's a name given by your hardware device. So I don't think you can have control over that. And it you don't have to change that. It it's just a name and to identify this controller, the brand. Yeah. Why do you have to check to see if the controller is named? Is that can you just get the get access and use the input? From that? Yeah. If it's not if it is not connected, because we have some other logic here. So uh, this this program is set up this way. So if we connect connect the controller to the system, we're using the controller to control the cubes. If it's not detected, we're using the keyboard. So if this controller is detected, we disable the keyboard. That's why we have this if here. We have to detect if that is con connected or not. Yeah. And I guess we could also be using like one Xbox controller if it's like a two player game, like a Mad Cat's controller or something. Well, that's and, and they have like vaguely different uh, you know, maybe maybe access zero on the Xbox controller is A, but maybe it's B on the Mac for instance. Yeah. That's a bit of another question. Like what if there's two Xbox controllers? Yeah. So it just uses the same uh, Let me finish this one controller so then we can we can we can we have a full control on the script so we can always do the <coughs> multiple controllers so yeah let's finish this so uh, if we have uh, the as it get axis less than zero which means we put it to the left we put it to the left and then we put the cubes location 
cube x location to point negative point 0.5 and if it's greater than zero we put it positive and if it's equals to zero we put it as zero okay so that gives this kind of effect so if we put it to the left it's going to be negative 0.5 and if it's equals to zero it's going to be back and if it's go this way it's going to be positive positive zero positive 0.5 okay yeah okay so if you're talking about the multiple controllers <coughs> You can see here. <coughs> yeah, we have a uh, input get joystick names. It, it actually returns an array of the controller you have connected there. So, so if you connect two controllers, the second controller uh, will be uh, maybe this index can be one because we start from zero, right? We start from zero, and yeah. And it will have a different name for that, so that you can use different name and uh, yeah, different names to control uh, which controller you want to use. Like, and you can map map it differently. All right, then what what's next is uh, yeah we have this this is an example of how can we control it and this is another axis and this is the other axis to control the rotation so yeah see uh, here we have an else here is this actually what what this else controls is this if so if controller equals if not, if the controller is not connected or you connect some other stuff I cannot identify, then we have, uh, uh, we, we use this, we use this block, we use this code block to control, the, to control that cube with your keyboard. So how do you use the keyboard? It's the input get key done. This is actually pretty easy. So input get key done, key code A. So we use A S D W, those four keyboard buttons to control up and down, left and right. I think you are pretty familiar with that. Uh, so how how do we implement that? Is input dot get key done. Actually, uh, if you want to have some, if you want to see some other function of input, what you can do is like here. Let's do it for example like input dot actually there are a whole bunch of whole bunch of functions you're able to use if you use this uh, uh, platform if you use Visual Studio once you hit the dot it will come with uh, all the available functions and the variables for you and if you move it to like get key up so it actually tells you okay it actually tells you the uh, explanation of the functionality so what this function do so I'm not sure and yeah maybe you cannot see like very clearly but it says the get key up it returns return true during the frame the user releases the key identified by the name so if you like get keys up key code dot a so this statement, it will return true once you release the A button. Not press, not hold, but release. 
So, but this, what we're trying to detect is get ketone. So, get ketone. If you want to say what is get ketone, you just need to find it and it will tell you. Return true during the frame. The user starts processing, pressing down the key identified by name. So, it is a frame. The user starts pressing. It will return true. Okay. So whenever you cannot remember uh, what this function for, and if you won't find if it has any function that is al already defined there, then you can just use directly. You do not need to. You do not want to implement it yourself. Then you can try to hit the hit the dot. Then you can have all those explanations here. Yeah, comments, and also you can refer to the documentation. You can always refer to documentation. Okay, so here what we're, we what we test is if the key is pressed. If if the key is pressed, so if we have a pressed, we move the cube negative 0.5 along the x-axis, and if the key up, we move it back. Okay, and the same thing here. A and D. D is control the cube to move to the right. Okay. So that's how you kind of have a control here over the Xbox and your keyboard and your keyboard. <coughs> All right. And okay. Let's go to next. So next is okay. Next, we need to play with this. So when we're doing the translation of the cube, when we're doing translation of this cube, uh, what we're doing is we're playing with this variable, cube x, cube y, cube z. Right. But this variable is what we define here. But where do we use those variables? Cube x. Say cube x. Right. It's actually at the end of the update function. How do we use that? Well, let me show you. It will cube x. Here. So it's transformation dot position we assign a new value it's a vector of three so x y z okay so <coughs> and game object position is defined by a vector of three so it's x y it's easy to understand and z is the depth it's the depth so x y and z so uh, at the end of each frame so this is the end of <coughs> every frame. So at the end of each frame, we kind of uh, create a new vector three with these three variables we just set up here, right? Remember, if we have any key done, we set up, we set up a variable like this, okay? So it's a vector of three. We assign it to the position. And then the system will use this kind of new vector to give a new position to that game object to render a new position to render that <coughs> game object on this new position <coughs> all right and this is some uh, this is some uh, debug information you can remove it or not so the debug information is going to output some information here in your console so here i'm trying to log debug log the controller's name and yeah if we actually have the input so we can remove that if it's kind of confusing okay <coughs> and you can notice here so the detect controller this function is also called every frame at the end of every frame so basically what this script does is it is actually continuously detecting the controller if this is connected every frame so so that means once you connect it it will be detected and it will disable the it disable the input from your keyboard and use the input from your controller 
<coughs> and we have an angui function here. I'm gonna talk about it later in today's class. Okay. So so we are manipulating we are manipulating the position with these three variables cube x, cube y, and cube z. Of course you can you can also manipulating the position without using the variable. You can just assign a value to the position. But we recommend you do it through this way. Okay, and and <coughs> why do we use this cube x, cube y, cube z? One of the important reason is here. I want to show this. So this is like the uh, initial initial position. Initial position of your cube, okay? So if you want like move the initial position, change the initial position of your cube. What you do is first you can do it here or you can drag it here or how can you do that through script also you can assign value here in your script if it's a point 0.5 <coughs> Okay. Let's not do this in wrong time. All right. So another way is you can manipulate through the script. One way is you change, kind of change it here. Yeah. So you see, it's moving to the positive positive 0.5 so that's 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 you that's you change this variable here so the system is used this value to render that object okay <coughs> another way if you want to do it in runtime a nice way is yes they are float but you do it like public you use the public variable you will notice once you change that to public let's give it yeah okay once you change it to public you will have some options here this area that area cube x cube y and cube z and then you can change that manually by tapping these values or you can drag it like what you drag like like how you drag this here and what more important is you can change that during runtime. No runtime. Okay, I believe we have somewhere else to assign value to this, so it's overwrite. I think it's because your uh, controller is yeah. in Yes, yes. So we have somewhere else in the update to overwrite that value. So, but if we remove those override you should be able to see we have all real-time control on these values here and then yeah transform yeah you can just put it here x y and z you can just what would you mean cube uh, you so like cube x Okay. Okay. Initially, when you have a when you have a game object, the default position is always being consistent with the transform, because the transform is a, actually a property, a component of that object. And what we do here uh, in this cube x, cube y, and cube z is another way we are trying to control. We are trying to assign new value to the transform with the cube x, cube y, and cube z. So that you do not need to change the uh, transforms X Y Z directly, and there's a, a way, a good way. It's a good way. It's good um, 
experience to do that because sometimes you do not want to directly to touch that uh, position, the transforms position. And you want to kind of calculate what is a uh, cube x first, and then you assign the value to there. But, but either way, it, it will work. If you directly change the position, the transform position, it will work. Uh, the same as what we do here. But sometimes you want an additional layer. If you think from a software engineering process, uh, strategy. So sometimes you want additional layer, you do not, you, you do want to change that layer instead of directly talking to the components of your game object. Sometimes it's for maybe security, sometimes it's more for efficiency, sometimes it's for uh, your easily change the structure of your system. So, so what we do here is we use the variable, we, we, we control that we manipulate the variable and assign the value back to the transform. Okay, transform. Okay, so once you ma actually once you manipulate this cube x y z here, then you should be able to uh, nice. We need to uh, modify the the script a little bit in order to make it work because uh, it's override somewhere. Let's see. Okay, nice. So once we disconnected the controller. So the value is no longer overwrite by that. So then we, we are able to move this cube x, right? And cube y. And cube z. So x, y, and z. And actually, if you move it like z, OK, it's gone. But once you stop, it won't be override. So that's only the runtime thing. Okay. So the value you assign here during runtime is only a runtime thing. When you stop the uh, when you stop the application, it will goes back. It will go back. Okay. And this is how we do this. Let's try. So you mean, okay, it's gone, and we. It's gonna be back because it's override, right? There's overrides there. All right. <coughs> Okay, another thing I want to explain here is I believe you noticed I use a this here. So, can somebody tell me what is this? What is this? Yeah, so what is this referred to? It refers to the rotation of the object in the 3D space. It's orientation rather than its position. Okay, let me let me go back to position. Orientation is kind of tricky. Uh, let's go back here. Oh, that's funny. I didn't use this for the rotation. So orientation. So this actually, if you are seeing orientation, this actually refers to. Oh, I thought you meant the rotate part. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean this, this. The keyword this. So which object? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this this keyword this is actually referring to the object, to the game object you attach the script to. So if you are familiar with the object oriented programming, this this there, right? So the this usually it refers to that object class object the object the code object okay here it refers to the refers to the object the game object you are con you are attaching this script to so so this uh, so this transform 
So this dot transform. This is a game object. The game object has a transform. And the transform has a function called rotate. So that's how we do the rotation with uh, with axis four, right? So this dot transform dot rotate. So that will work if you attach this the script to this project to this object. But let's try if we want to attach. Control config. Right. So what's gonna happen? I'm attaching the script to both of the script to both of the objects. Yeah, let's see. See, they kind of go into the same position because we're initializing those to the same position. And if we move, we can see the actually doing the things together because they are controlled by the same by the same script okay that's only one way to do that to control the behavior with the script another way is you can like attach it to anywhere else like we, we, we create an empty project empty empty object right and we put it here. And we disable or we remove it. Remove component. We remove the component. Yeah, we can just disable it. So then, since this no nothing attached. So we are not able to remove the any cube, but you can see something's removing because I'm attaching that to an empty object. Just it's empty, so you can see nothing. Just you can see nothing from this left side. It's a game. It's a game screen, and that's the edit screen. So you can still see something there. Okay, but it what? But another way to do that is we are putting this to the uh, to the empty to the empty and we try to change it like we put uh, if you remember we can use public to uh, public game object and we call it object to be Control object to be controlled, and then from this script here, you will see another, yeah, another slot here. It's called object to be controlled. So you can assign an object to this variable, but we still need to change. Right now, it won't do anything if we run this. It won't do any, anything. Still, it's moving the empty object because that script is attaching to the empty object. But now we don't want to do that. See, we always use this dot transform. So right now, what we can do is, what we can do is, somebody tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're correct. Great. So we can we can change all of these with the object to be controlled. Let's just let's just try this transform the position. Okay. But don't forget you want kind of put a cube here. So you can drag. You can drag it from the hierarchy panel or you can select by clicking here. By clicking there. Somewhere close to this uh, control cube object, this variable, by clicking here you can select the object you want to control. Actually this this object are within the hierarchy panel. Uh, the object in the hierarchy panel that existing 
game object in your scene. Or you can drag drag this cube here. So now we should be able to control. But we are not attaching any script to the blue cube. Instead, we are attaching the script to an empty object, but we can still control that. So the trick is, you want to con you still need to tell the tell the system that I'm going to control that object. Or what you can do if you are not using public, because sometimes you want to avoid public because you want kind of hard code which object you want to do and, or you do not want the uh, the classes that outside this program or outside classes to access this variable so you you kind of don't want sometimes you don't want to use a public variable to protect them so at that moment if we are not defining this as public all right so then you don't have you you will have this disappeared one okay it will disappear from here and then how you how you assign the value is you assign the value through your code you assign the value through your code like in the start what we can do is object to be controlled we assign a value hmm, find find object by name yeah okay find with name let's see the name is cube 2 let's try the black black cube okay cube 2 Yeah, thank you. Cube two. So here we we're not we're not uh, configuring anything here. So what we do is we assign the value through this statement. We let the system to find the cube two with the name, and then we should still be able to control that black one. Okay, and that gives you the ability to make make like then dynamically dynamically control what kind of what object you want to control, right? Because this cube cube two is a string right now. You can replace it with any variables, and that variable is controlled by some other conditions. Like if you press the button, the the control will be shipped from cube one. To cube two or from cube two cube one so that you can do that dynamically so that's another way to control the object uh, so sometime you kind of if you like like doing a very well structured program very well structured uh, of your game so you kind of use this use this uh, project use this kind of uh, script to control instead of attaching your script to each one you want to do then instead maybe maybe you want to connect a hundred you want to control a hundred object together with some script then what you do is may, maybe it's not the best practice to connect it a hundred times to a hundred pro to a hundred object maybe you miss something there so instead you can put it one here and Sometime this is the object to be controlled and you can use array, array list, maybe some collection somehow to put that 100 object in that collection and then you can use your code to connect everything together. Okay. So that's how you yeah, how the script work.
All right, and let's say something else. Now let's disable this. We're not using this. Let's go back to cube one. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. It's not in this object. Project. So I kind of upload the wrong project to the D2L. I will upload upload a new one later. And if you if you have look at the D2L, you can find that actually I am uploading the video uh, of the classroom to the D2L. So if you think you missed something, you can always go back to look at the video. Okay. So, control. All right. Now, let's forget about the controller. Now, let's play something with the keyboard. All right. So, uh, so you can see from the script. We're using actually ASDW to control that movement. Nice. We need to set up something here. ASDW. So we're using ASDW to control that to control that movement. So what if, what if we want to use something else? Uh, see, say we want to use some other profile. So you change the key all the time. So most of the game, it has the ability to change that uh, control profile. Remember? Yeah, maybe you are not. You don't do not want to use the ASDW. You want to use something else. Like I like JKL IJKL. Let's see how we do that. IJKL, yes. Okay. So it's kind of tricky now. Uh, let me see how. I mean, let me look at the code. Alpha one, alpha two. Okay. So in this game, let's see how we're doing the setting. Okay. So if you look at the left, the left up corner, there's uh, actually a small panel there that shows which button am I pressing. So right now I'm doing the W, so it's gonna go up. If I release, it's nothing. It's go back, right? So so ASDW. Okay, so right now I think it's shift plus two. Okay, right now if I press W, W, S, A, D, it's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna do anything. But instead, if I press I, K, J, L, I, J, K, L, you can see the input from that panel. Okay, if I use IJKL, it's actually moving. So, so we are actually have some function there to switch to switch the profile of your control. How can we do that? It's here. Um, okay, this one. To avoid confuse. Confusion. Okay. So what we did is here we have function here. We have switch. So we use a variable to decide what kind of mode are we in. If we are in the mode one, the scheme one, 
then we're using w -A -W -S -A -D. if we're in the mode 2, the schema 2, we're using ijkl and then we use this function to assign the WSAD or IKJL to four variables here like up key, down key, left key, and right key and then we call this key code update function yeah. so we call this key code update function to kind of decode this this kind of string to the key code then use we, we, you, we have this up key so this is another four variable so it's transferred from this four variables and then anyway the, the, the ultimate goal is like we use those variables to hold uh, what kind of control is related to up we use this up key code we can if we assign I to up key code, we are using I for control up. If we assign W, it's gonna use W. So whatever we assign to up key code, this variable, it's gonna be used to control the up. And how do we do that? Is yeah, up key code. Yeah, because we in the input we are detecting this variable instead of some certain certain key so we are using the variable instead of a key so that you can have you have the ability to change the variable so that you have the ability to change the control schema to control the contr uh, to change the control profile in the game so that's how you do that and another thing I want to mention here is this if input get key shift plus key code alpha 1 is actually if you do not know what is the key code of of the number 1 so just dot see we have uh, alpha 0 1 2 3 4 through 6 so that's actually mapping to the numbers and you have those b at so once you have the dot, you have everything there available for you. So here we want to use alpha one. So if the system detect you are you are using shift plus two, it's gonna switch the schema to two. If it's shift plus one, shift and one, then it's gonna switch the schema to one. So one is ASDW, two is JKLI. It's uh, maybe a little bit confusion. Uh, so if you have any question, please feel free to interrupt. Because uh, sometimes you kind of need to do it, code it yourself in order to fully understand the logic there. Just I'm giving you some clues here. So how what the, the main idea, the big idea is first we use this kind of code segment to control the schema, the current schema we are in. And then with that schema, we kind of assign these different values. If it's schema one, case one, we assign a group of value to four variables. If it's schema two, we assign another group of value to, to, this, to the same four variables. And then we are detecting this, we are detecting with the variables instead of just W, S, AD so that we are able to switch between the two schemas okay now let's see so it runs like this so if we want to use yeah by default the schema 1 and IJK is not not working and we switch to 2 and if we use shift and left shift and one then ijkl not working wsdl working yeah so that's how we change how we change between two different profiles actually it's it's not very hard if as long as you read through the code by yourself or or you're doing the project it's going to be very easy to understand if you actually knows the basic logic 
of a program, how the program works. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, any questions so far? So far, so good? All right. All right. Yeah. I That's do. Um, I know I don't have any past classes, unfortunately. Um, so, what do you mean by you refer by schema? Like, is that just like the control mapping? Yeah, control, different mapping. Okay. Yeah. So, it's like, if, like let's say the. AS, ASDW mapping to up and down, left and right. Okay. Or are you mapping JKLI, another or, group? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, you can do that. But it's going to be different code. You kind of need the input of the, the wheel. Yeah. And you assign, you, you have a maybe another layer that you can assign the value of the wheel input through those variables. And do something like that. Because I've seen some guy, are you familiar with the counter strike source? What's that? Counter strike source. Yeah. Is that hardware? No, it's a PC game. Okay. So it's, a, it's, a sh it's a shooter. And this guy, he actually played the game with just a drive wheel and a, and a uh, gas pedal. He just played it just that way and he actually got a few points that Yeah, there are a bunch of games that you can play with wheels. And maybe they have different ways of implementing that. I believe if it's from a, like a nice titled company, uh, it's gonna be have very good engineered code there. This is actually a simple version of how you switch this game. It's not the only way you do that. Right. You can have a lot of different layers to do that. In different layers you have uh, maybe different kind of controls and it's well engineered. But the basic, this is a very simple way to do that. This is actually the basic idea. I mean, the theory behind that is still this. You're doing that through script, and you are basically calling the script to change the behavior of that object. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alright, thank you. I have a question. Uh, can, you, can you go over again like, how, you, how you are controlling the cube through the empty object? Empty? Yeah. Oh, I, I missed that. Oh. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, let me show you real quick. So we first create the empty game object, so it's going to be nothing in the thing, just an object. We call it empty. E M P T Y. Empty. And then you kind of, uh, we what we need is this control config. Control config two. Okay, so this this code we actually uh, yeah this is another different project, but uh, the idea is the same. So so basically you use variables instead of using this. When you're using this, it always refers to the object you attach to. But if you use variable, you can assign different value to that variable, so that you have the ability to assign cube one or cube two to that variable. Okay, now let's disable this uh, from the object, and then it's empty. We actually, here we are. I'm using a, a array, an array, to set up the object I want to control. Say, if I want to control the two together, we set up the array as two, and then we drag cube one here. We kind of drag cube two here, and then. And ASDW to control those cubes. Right. So you have different. What I mean is, uh, the script is changing the behavior of 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 a game object or game objects. So you have the ability to set up whether it is controlling the behavior of the object you are attaching to, or you are changing the behavior of the other object you assign the value to that script okay so basically it's just just you're manipulating that variables it's not something pretty advanced right 
yeah it's still you, you do that through the code you switch you switch the variable maybe you can make the variable equals to maybe this dot game object and then things like that then you can still control this so it's just some play play around with play around with the variables okay uh, where are we yeah switch the profile and then we have another thing we need to play here is okay I'm gonna delay this empty okay so you really in, in the uh, game what you can do is not only like using one control profile or switch between two profile what else you do is you can customize right you can customize the profile you can use you, you if you do not want WASDW uh, ASDW uh, JKLI if you want to use something else what you what do you do so we can also do that in our code let's see we can do that in our code so it's st still we are doing that through the variables so, so in one place the system you want the system kind of to assign if we want the system to check if the up button is pressed we just use the variable to check input get key done up button up button is the variable and then in another place we are kind of assign different value to the up button that's how we change the profile right and if we want to customize the profile we just we take input we take a new input like we want to use uh, the key G to control the up then we kind of take the input from your UI and then we assign this G to that up button to that variable okay so let's see uh, I have an example here that how we can do this so this is actually I, I have a simple GUI here uh, so here if it's a control and it tells you the current the current profile you're using so we're we're now we're uh, I'm only giving you an example of uh, keyboard up and keyboard down how we customize that right now in profile one the keyboard up is W keyboard down is S in profile two the keyboard up is I and the keyboard down is K okay keyboard down is K and so if we hit profile one we kind of use W and D to control it right control it but if we're using I and K it's not gonna working it's not not gonna work I and K so if we hit profile two I K is working I and K is working W and S is not working okay but okay here comes the amazing part if we want to change customize the keyboard up from W to G we click it and we use the G we input the G there so now the up becomes G and we change it down to B we to save and then we, we if we're using if we're using profile one okay W and S is not gonna work see I'm inputting W I'm pressing S I'm pressing W it's not gonna work but instead G and B is working to control the up and down yeah so the logic behind that is when I press that button the system kind of remember my input and then it assigned that value to the variable to be detected okay we have five minutes so we can look at the code here so I'll upload this project to to this way you can download that 
So the the project I upload in last week is uh, is another project. So uh, 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 yeah, I, I will modify that. Modify that. Okay. All right. So it's a uh, control config three. We have diff we have three of them, right? So first is the simplest one. The second one we do a demo of switching between the profiles, and the third one we we kind of uh, a customize customize the control profile. So here, what we do? Yeah, I'm running out of power. Do this real quick. Running out of time and power. Okay, so so this is an GUI function here, an GUI function that actually controls controls those button, those button panel, those button groups, and yeah, we have a nicer way, we have a better way to do the uh, the GUI, the GUI. But this an GUI function is still uh, something you code the GUI through the code. Let's look at this. We have better way, but we can talk about that uh, in the future. Okay, so we GUI begin a group, so that's kind of set up uh, those panel. And if we look at the, the, this button, the GUI dot button, and it, you give the kind of assigned location of the button, the location and the height and wide of the, the, the wide and the height of the button, and then the name of the button, what is going to show on the button, okay? So this is button profile one, profile two. It's something here. Profile one, profile two. Once you hit one or two, it's gonna change the schema. It's gonna change the profile, like what we did in the script two. Okay, it's just current profile equals to profile one. A switch to one if we hit the profile. So GUI dot button is actually return a boolean value. If you hit the button, this will be returned true. Okay, so GUI dot button. It at one time, at one hand, it's render a button, and the other hand, it's tell you whether this button is pressed or not. Question? Is it possible that you have to make sure that that's the right? Where is it to have a separate array? So let's say that you're going to profile number and then the W is. Yeah, it's also possible, so we can talk about that after class. Let me finish this. Okay. Yeah, all right. So this uh, uh, profile, change the profile, and keyboard up, keyboard up. Uh, this is the label, and we have button here. See here, this is the variable. We're using this variable, and uh, okay. So once this variable is pressed, so we, we kind of call another function. <coughs> we set, set a flag here to key change to true and get input to true and input string. So we kind of we read the, the, we read the input, so like here. Once we hit the button and we are waiting for input, and when I input the button, so this input is remembered and sent to the setup key code function you kind of need to go through the code to get very familiar with that. But the logic is like this, this code. We, we use the button control. Once we hit the button, and we are able to change the variables here. And so this is the keyboard up, this is keyboard down. Yeah. So this is the change. This is the button for, for the schema one. This is the button for schema two, like this two button. So this four buttons, they actually function, <coughs> functional, the function of this four button, they are similar. So once you click, it getting the input and use the input to assign to, to the actual profile you want to use. Okay, so yeah. So I will, so yeah, that's it for today and I will upload this code. Also, if you check, please check your D2L because I'm gonna post the project one on D2L. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you are kind of confusion or sometimes some place you get confused. 
you can go go look at the code, read the code. And if you if you cannot understand, please uh, come to my office or send me email. I can explain that to you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so